WTAE TV Pittsburgh. And now, Pittsburgh's number one morning newscast. This is WTAE 4 News. Hundreds gathered to remember a firefighter killed in the line of duty in Munn Hall. Two of his co-workers remain in critical condition. His stolen license plate says it all. Police need your help to find a man posing as one of them. And one of the daycare workers who was supervising this little girl who was left in a hot van is facing charges this morning. Good morning. It's Tuesday, the 8th of August. We'll have those stories and more after we first get a look at what Joe DiNardo is calling for this week. First, let's take a look at the current conditions. Outside right now, it is 65 degrees. The humidity is at 75 percent. It's gone down since earlier this morning. Winds are southwest, southeast rather, and the barometer is falling. Here's what uh, Joe is calling for today. A mixture of sunshine and clouds with an isolated late day shower, high of 83. That'll feel nice. Tonight, mostly cloudy with a few showers, a low 67. Tomorrow, mainly cloudy with a few showers or thunder showers, a high of 83. And we'll check out your extended forecast in just about 10 minutes. But right now, we'll check on your rush hour traffic with Neil Spence. Neil? Accident on the boulevard of the Allies in the construction zone at Jamonville. 18-wheeler in an automobile. Medics have long left. Uh, they now have the automobile on the back of a flatbed tow truck. The 18-wheeler will be leaving shortly, so in a few more minutes it will be clear. In the meantime, in that construction zone, the, the boulevard traffic slows down as you come off of the parkway going toward that area. And then stay steady all the way toward the Liberty Bridge. Remember, single lane inbound with this construction zone at the moment and two lanes going outbound. Parkway East commuters, you have a type at Edgewood, Swissvale. The Parkway West is still clear in both directions. Now 28 is slowing in the construction zone at the RIDC. Then stay steady toward the north side. Allegheny River Boulevard will pick up a lot of commuters this morning, but so far only brief traffic light delays at Nadine and Sandy Creek Roads, and it remains light and steady on east and west Carson Streets. And that's what it looks like from over Oakland. I'll send it back to you, Michelle. Thank you, Neil. Gunfire on a residential north side street overnight. Three people were wounded on North Charles Street. Police are continuing that investigation. And a car crash in Point Breeze last night damaged three cars, but no one was injured. The crash happened at Penn and Lang Avenues. The driver of one of the cars could face DUI charges. On the school watch this morning, teachers in the Fraser School District in Fayette County have a new contract this morning. The school board ratified the new contract last night despite protests from some taxpayers. Teachers will have a wage freeze in the first year of that contract and raises of 3.5 to 4 percent in the next four years. Last year, you might remember, Fraser teachers went on strike, delaying the first day of school for a month. Two firefighters killed in the line of duty are being mourned this morning. In New Kensington in Westmoreland County, the fire at this home claimed the life of 26-year-old Eric Mangieri early yesterday morning. The floor of the house just collapsed beneath him. Sheila Highland reports residents have been gathering at the house to mourn the loss of the young firefighter who was preparing to be married. A black wreath and ribbon adorned the New Kensington number four fire station. You know, I heard on the radio that one guy, one fireman died. I just started flipping out. 26-year-old Eric Mangieri of Arnold joined the department 15 months ago at the encouragement of his fiancée, Marcy Hecker, a fellow volunteer firefighter. She was on the scene here at this house when Eric got trapped inside. Mortars flocked to the scene, leaving flowers and mementos. This little girl brought a homemade pink cross. So, so you can get to heaven. Neighbors, even strangers, felt compelled to pay their respects, especially fellow volunteer firefighters. Yeah, because you never know, once you enter a burning building, you never know if you're coming back out or not. The tears flow freely. Flags fly at half-staff. Black ribbons tell the story, placed everywhere at nearby fire stations. Firefighters have lost another brother. This happened a few years ago with the guys up in Brackenridge. I was listening to it over the radio when it was all going on, and it just... It's one of those things where we're both firemen. In fact, all three of us are firemen, and just it's something that hits close to us. A sad irony, just down the way from the scene of the fire in Lower Burrow, Western Pennsylvania Firemen's Association is holding its annual convention. Eric Mangieri and his fiance attended a dance here just hours before the fire. It just bored me. I just was sick. They'll probably be with everybody for, for years. Because hundreds of firefighters will be in town for their convention, it's expected there will be a huge funeral procession for Eric Mangieri on Thursday morning. In New Kensington, Westmoreland County, Sheila Highland, WTAE 4 News. Eric Mangieri died of smoke inhalation. His funeral will be at Mount St. Peter's in New Kensington. 
The town of Munhall mourns the loss of firefighter William Marks. He'll be buried today. A time of death among the firefighting families is a time of pain. It is also a time of love and hope. Hundreds gathered inside and outside a Munhall funeral home last night for a memorial service for 48-year-old William Marks. He was killed when the fire truck he was riding to a call Saturday crashed. Six other firefighters were hurt in that crash. 63-year-old Dale Cannon and 19-year-old Isaac Bomey remain in critical condition this morning. David DeWall, the driver of one of the power boats that crashed during the regatta, has been upgraded from critical to serious condition. One of our engineers shot the crash with his home video camera. Take a look at it. The boats race up the Allegheny under the Fort Duquesne Bridge. A red boat you see pulls ahead. It is able to make the turn, but the boats beside and behind it don't make the turn and they crash. The white boat goes up over the other boat. Both boats go airborne. The driver of the white boat, Bill Jewell, was not hurt. Police say she's responsible for leaving a child in a hot van, and they've charged her with reckless endangerment and endangering a child's welfare. 54-year-old Betty Barub of Chartiers Township is accused of leaving a 4-year-old girl in the van during a daycare outing. She was supervising eight children from Grandmom's house, a daycare center in Manchester. The children were at a skating rink. And while the others were inside, Shanique Lyons was left in a van in 90-degree temperatures. She was rescued by an off-duty police officer and is just fine now. The state public welfare department has revoked the license of Grandmom's house. Its owner voluntarily closed it earlier. And a Peters Township daycare center has also been shut down. Last week, a little four-year-old girl died of heat stroke after she was forgotten inside of a van at Creation Station. Pittsburgh police are trying to find a man pretending to be a police officer, and he is dangerous. Over the weekend, the phony officer shot a prostitute in the Strip District, forced a man off the road downtown, and then tried to pull two women over near the Corliss Tunnels. The fake cop is a white man, 25 to 28 years old, six feet tall, blonde hair, and a stocky build. He was driving a light yellow or white sedan. And the car has a license plate like this one. It says, bad guy. Police think the plate was stolen. If you see him, avoid him, and then call police right away. A stay of execution for a convicted killer who has made headlines all over the country and the world, for that matter. Mumia Abu-Jamal of Philadelphia was to be executed in nine days. He is requesting a new trial, and a judge thought the decision might not be made before his scheduled August 17th execution. Abu-Jamal is a former radio talk show host convicted of murdering a police officer. Would you want to witness an execution? The answer appears to be yes for more than just a few Pennsylvanians. More than 200 people have responded to the state's request for citizen witnesses to executions. Most of the applicants so far have been men, although several couples have submitted requests. They represent a variety of professions, including lawyers, teachers, a minister, and are most commonly between 37 and 40 years old or over 60. Authorities say a few oddballs have responded too. Residents in Scott Township get the chance to talk about their concerns about a proposed group home for the mentally retarded. Last night, the home's owner, Thomas Simchak of Residential Resources, met with frustrated citizens who have previously complained of fights among residents and a woman who even exposed herself. They talked about the incidents when people have been locked out of the home. The door was locked. <laughs> the residents couldn't get in. However, they had keys. My point is, if they hadn't had keys, what would have been the next step? Those guys were in there by themselves with the door locked. We have a 24-hour answering service as well as a beeper that in the event that somebody is locked out. Residents also questioned why the home is exempted from taxes. That's something that's determined by the county. A fierce fight against flames in the desert. Now homes are threatened. That story when we come back. But up first after the break, your Donato weather forecast. Get ready for some showers out there. Complaints? Fax it. Suggestions? Fax it. Call 1-800-FAX-WTAE. 